Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Sweats. Got a Big 12 matchup here, week four. The Utes on the road in Boone Pickens. Let's do it. Welcome to The Sweats. The Sweats. Sweats. Get the sauce. All right, like I said, Utah's on the road at Oklahoma State here. Looks like the Pokes are now catching two and a half, which is up from one and a half, indicating some sharp action coming in on the Utah side. Total sitting at 54, 53 and a half, somewhere in there, depending on your sports book. Let's take a look at the pie charts. According to this data, which you should take with a grain of salt, uh, action's coming in on Oklahoma State. Public action, money slightly leaning on the Pokes. Again, take this data or leave it so let's get into this one uh we got two teams sitting at three and oh someone's got to take a loss here uh utah just one and two against the spread oklahoma state two and one to start this season let's start with the utah offense um i mean these numbers are a little deceiving they did play one of their games without cam rising as a whole the run game's been okay they're 47th in ofei 37th in yards per carry 50th in rushing uh, success rate 49th in effective rush passing numbers don't look great um, the Utah offense did look somewhat serviceable without Cam Rising last week, though. Uh, that was against Utah State, so <laughs> maybe consider the source. But 460 total yards, 239 through the air, 221 rushing yards, put up 38 points in the game. So it's not like the, the offense looked absolutely terrible without Cam Rising, but we know this Utah team is completely different when he's on the field. Uh, in fact, the Utah offense with Cam Rising as, at quarterback has only been held to below 20 points once ever, and that was November 9th of 2022. So if Cam Rising's on the field, this Utah offense usually moves the ball pretty much 99% of the time and we saw it a couple weeks back when he got injured uh, we saw a night and day difference with Cam Rising on the field and Cam Rising off the field when he got hurt in that game they were up 23 nothing still the first half Cam Rising well actually it was 17 nothing and then Utah scored a defensive touchdown so technically when the new quarterback came in it was 23 nothing but Cam Rising was responsible for seven whatever <laughs> it was 23 nothing um, that game finished 23 12 and Utah's offense from that point on when Cam Rising got hurt just 88 total yards and zero points so obviously it's huge for Utah that everything I'm reading is saying Cam Rising should be ready to go for this game now this is a road game so I guess we can pull up Cam Rising's home away splits from 2022 which is the last year that he played um, definitely better numbers at home. Touchdown to interception ratio, 9-6 to six on the road, 16-1 to one at home. Passer rating, 144-4 on the road, 161-4 at home. But honestly, some of these splits, especially in college football, most likely a result of playing a much easier schedule at home. So I wouldn't really t uh, read too much into this. So how's their matchup here against the Oklahoma State defense? Well, this unit has definitely been a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, they are still sitting at 25th in DFEI, but 32nd in effective rush, 68th in effective pass. As as far as raw data, 88th in yards per play allowed, 76th in yards per carry allowed, 89th in yards per pass attempt allowed. Definitely not great. What Arkansas did to Oklahoma State on this field just a couple weeks ago was unholy. 648 total yards of offense, 9.0 yards per pass, 4.9 yards per rush. Arkansas came into this stadium and did whatever they wanted. Oklahoma State was lucky to come away with the win there. I believe it was in double overtime, I, th I think. So yeah, Oklahoma State's defense definitely leaves us with some questions. Um, now, one area where on paper they might have the advantage is the pass rush. Utah's offensive line surprisingly struggling a little bit in pass protection. Just 57th in pass blocking grade, 11, 111th in sack rate allowed, 43rd in hurry rate, 85th in pressure rate. And look at Oklahoma State's pass rush numbers. These actually look pretty solid. 54th, 39th, 28th, and 10th. Here's the thing. Colin Oliver's out. He's one of Oklahoma State's best defensive players. Three-time all-conference linebacker. He will not be playing in this game. So, I mean, look, as a whole on this side, if Cam Rising's on the field, I trust Utah's offense to score because that's kind of how it always is. Oklahoma State's defense, I think, is better than what they've shown us, but I don't trust them to make stops against Utah as long as Cam Rising plays, which from what I'm reading, he should be playing. But what do we think about the Oklahoma State offense against Utah? Um, well, Oklahoma State's offensive numbers don't look quite how you would expect them to. I mean, entering the season, all eyes were on Ollie Gordon, right? Oklahoma State and this Heisman Trophy winning running back or Heisman Trophy hopeful running back. Actually, the rushing numbers look pretty terrible. 108th in yards per carry, 122nd in success rate, 120th in effective rush. What's been keeping this team afloat is the passing attack. 27th, 25th, and 19th. 
Uh, Alan Bowman's been excellent. 989 yards, nine touchdowns, two picks, almost nine full yards per pass attempt. Last week, Oklahoma State went on the road to Tulsa, and no question, Tulsa had a very clear defensive game plan, take Ollie Gordon out of the game, and they did. He had 17 carries, just 41 rushing yards, 2.4 yards per carry. Didn't do much of anything, but Oklahoma State still beat the shit out of him. Why? Because Alan Bowman went off. Over 77% completions, 396 passing yards, five touchdowns, passer rating above 231. Now, when it comes to Allen Bowman in the Oklahoma State offense, though, we do have to question the strength of schedule here. Here are the Oklahoma State opponents this season and their DFEI ratings. Here are the defenses they've seen so far. Arkansas was the toughest one at 55th. And honestly, we know Arkansas's defense is not, <laughs> not anything to be proud of. Other than that, they saw Tulsa 114th. They saw... State, who is a respectable FCS program, but still an FCS program. Utah's 10th, 10th. This is a top 10 defense. And under Kyle Whittingham, they're almost always a top 10 defense. They're elite against the run. They're elite against the pass. 20th in effective rush, 17th in effective pass. Now, to be fair to Oklahoma State's offense, we can play the same game. We can say, hey, who has Utah's defense played, though? And that'd be fair. Southern Utah FCS program, Baylor 78th in OFEI. Uh, Utah State 91st. So yeah, Oklahoma State's offense will also be Utah's defense toughest test. The reason I'm a little more on board with buying into Utah's defense is because we've seen it year after year for a decade now. Utah's defense always seems to show up. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to shut down Oklahoma State or anything. In fact, I'm a little worried about the pass rush on this side. Utah, usually one of the better pass rushes in college football. Look at Oklahoma State's offensive line numbers and pass protection. 9th, 1st, 11th, and 19th. This Oklahoma State offensive line has not allowed a sack in nine of their last 13 games. This is a very good unit. Remember, it's pretty much the same unit from last year. This is an elite pass protection. Now, again, who have they played? We're talking about Utah here. Utah was probably a top top five pass rush last year probably a top 10 top 15 pass rush again this year the numbers look fine so we'll have to see if that pass protection holds up but if there's one aspect of this Oklahoma State offense that I definitely trust it's the offensive line I mean obviously an Ollie Gordon is an NFL running back but that offensive line is good so that's an interesting battle there I actually think Oklahoma State's going to be able to move the ball in this game with or without Ollie Gordon going off because um, now he's been held in check the last two games first game of the season 126 yards three touchdowns looking like a Heisman hopeful last two games 90 rushing yards 2.6 yards per carry just one touchdown and it's not like it's going to get easier here they're playing Utah this team has had a top 10 run defense for like two decades <laughs> I mean they always have an elite run defense but I think Bowman might have some time Utah secondary is good but it's not elite I think Oklahoma State honestly is going to be able to move the football in this game but all in all Cam Rising is a guy I trust more than Bowman. Kyle Winningham is a guy I trust more than Gundy, although Gundy's a dog. I think Utah has to be the play here. They should win this game. I think this is the better team. The reason I haven't bet this yet is Kyle Winningham is such a scumbag with the injury report. I wouldn't be surprised if Cam Rising is out for the season and he's not telling. I mean, I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying wouldn't surprise me because last year, Cam Rising was listed as a game time decision every single week for the first two months of the season. He never played. He was listed as a game time decision in the opener last year. He didn't play a single snap. So Kyle Winningham has shown us he has no problem playing this injury guessing game, using it to his strategic advantage, which means I'm not going to put my money down expecting Cam Rising to be out there until I physically see him take a snap. So as far as betting this game, I don't have a single dollar down on it, but if Cam Rising plays, I feel Utah will win. So anything under a field goal, I would go Utah, maybe take a minus 130 money line. But again, not doing it until I see Cam Rising out there. If you want to see all the bets I currently have open, head over to kylecrims.com and click on open bets you'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here also when you sign up for sauce network plus it comes with access to the discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league 150 dollars on one of these trophies go to the winner every single week i laugh every time i pull that trophy up because they're awesome uh, so yeah if you're interested head over to the website and sign up let's have ourselves a good week live show 10 a.m eastern time on saturday we'll be live for two straight hours 10 all the way up to kickoff go through every single game on the board or as many as we can if you're able to make it we'd love to see in the comments let's have ourselves a good week four i had a really rough week three need to bounce back remember to bet responsibly and i'll talk to you in the discord